as far as who's going to make the team, and me would be Vernon, Blake Bell, Buster Anderson, and well, they just signed Carrier up to a two-year extension, so it'll probably be him. Kaepernick, that's that's the bottom line, Kaepernick. Whatever type of season he has, that's what we're going to have. If he goes out there, has a breakthrough season, because he, he has more weapons this season than he did last season. Mm-hmm. You know, he has... Are you listening? Niner! I know I say it every week, but I'm especially excited this week. (laughs) And why? Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Camp practices have been rolling along and looking good. I know what you're thinking. I've had this conversation on a number of occasions already. Everybody said, oh man, the defense is just manhandling the offense. What are we going to do with that offensive line? Hey, remember, it's a drill. The defense, they don't have to guess. They're just pinning their ears back and they're coming charging in. And of course, the offense has to react. But think about this for a moment. And at the same time, think about the fact that the offense has also done a few dazzling numbers on the defense. So it's an equal thing to get worried about. You can worry a little bit about what's going on the offensive side. You have to worry a little bit what's going on the defensive side as well. It's okay in a real game situation. The object of surprise will be, or should I say the element of surprise, will be in motion. And also, that defense is legit. That is seriously real. That defense is going to be top three minimum. And I say that because they were last year's top five defense, right? Everybody's come back. Glenn Dorsey, Ian Williams, all these guys have come back from last year's injuries. Add Darnell Docker to that package. That defense is serious. Top three, top two. The 49ers will get better just working with that defensive unit. So it's all good. It's all good. So they're boring. The only thing you need to worry about this year, just like last year, injury. You know what we should do right now? Put your hand on your monitor, please, and let us pray together. Oh, dear Lord, please save us, deliver us from debilitating injury. Shine a special light on Colin Kaepernick, Tory Smith, Anquan Bolden, and Carlos Hyde. And please, Lord, can you see to it that Reggie Bush can at least make it to week eight? I know he's been a problem, but at least till we get through playing the Seahawks and on my defensive side, take special care of Navarro Bowman and Ahmad Brooks. And Lord, if I could ask you for one more favor, please help Aaron Lynch. The boy got fat. Help him lose weight. I can't believe Aaron's in camp right now conditioning because he was overweight got a quote of the week this week let me i'm telling you right now i was so inspired when i read this after what i've seen so far and the way that we're going i'm excited about this year truly am i think this is one of the best teams we've had there are so many guys out there that are doing such great things young guys the veterans reggie bush coming on the team you see all these guys and they get the philosophy. We're out here to play football. We're not out here to do anything else. We're going to go out, we're going to smash people in the mouth, and we're going to have fun. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Sign, Alex Boone. Just recently we heard from Joe Staley, the same sentiments. This is legit. <laughs> I tell you, I am so pumped up for the statement. It makes me want to holla! Hello! Calm down, man, or you won't even make it to the season. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Okay. That third wide receiver spot is a hit series in camp right now, bro. Mm, yes. Bruce Ellington pulled up lame at exactly the wrong time. <laughs> he was looking good a few days ago, too. I know. Who's that third receiver, Ron Bo? Uh, Everybody's a smoking in camp right now. Mm. You got QP, yeah. Jerome Simpson, DeAndre White, yeah. and Flipper Anderson's boy Dre was cutting up a few days ago. I Ow. know. <laughs> Who do you like, man? Oh, I just don't know. I can't tell you, man. I just don't know. Come on now, Ron Bo. You got to make a choice. Oh, okay. Jerome Simpson. All right. I, who, yeah, how about you? All right, all right. I'm still hanging with QP. Wish we could keep them all, though. 
Alright. Hey, find out what your guests got to say today and let me know about it. I'll be back in a little bit. Alright. All right. Okay, okay. In fact, that's a good idea. Let us stop clowning around and go to the Niner Camp. Tell me. Don't tell us all. Who are you going to put on this year's Super Bowl winning 49er team? Let me introduce you to Ike. Ike is out in Mississippi, proving once again there is no place that you cannot find a San Francisco 49er fan. Ike, in what city are we talking about here? We are in Ridgeland, Mississippi, which is 10 minutes outside of Jackson. All right. I, 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 I'm always curious as, now, how did you become a 49er fan? Well, I must say, um, well, being from Mississippi, I always watched Patrick Willis, really, Ooh. since he was down here in Ole Miss. That's um, right. So when he got drafted, that's when I really started uh, taking an interest in the team. Because before then, I think, you know, I would just follow the Dolphins a little bit. I wouldn't say I was really a big fan, but ever since then, I started to uh, watch the 49ers and, um, the defense is what saw my mom as a defensive guy, so <laughs> since then I've been in love with them. Yeah, if you like defense, the 49ers, if they don't have anything else, they'll always have a defense. And that yeah. is probably the case this year, too. But, you know, everybody talked badly about Jeep Christ before he became our offensive coordinator when he was Caps quarterback coach. That was no big deal. But now Jeep is running things in place of Greg Roman. What do you think okay. about Jeep Christ? I'm confident in G. Chris because of the fact that he's been Kaepernick's quarterback coach. You have someone who comes in who understands what Kaepernick can and cannot do and can adjust, maybe. Uh, I think that was probably the biggest problem with Greg Roman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I must say another thing is I like who they got to replace G. Chris as a quarterback coach. Uh, Steve Logan. Yes. Yeah. I have, when we first had him, I kind of went in and um, watched some tape of him, and I just like how he breaks down your reads and routes and as far as what you want to do and who is your one, two, three, and who is your tick down. So I think that pretty much, uh, that would probably help Cap out a little bit more too, somebody who teaches him and explains this is what we're actually trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Steve is like the, he's like the Jedi. And making, getting ready to make Cap into a Jedi, man. You're right. Yeah. Steve Logan knows what this game of football is all about. Yeah. We're in camp. The excitement is underway. <laughs> all kind of things happening. All right. Vernon Davis. He's going to start. Your tight end pack is loaded. You got all yeah. kind of guys. But I'm looking, first of all, Busta, uh, Rory Busta Anderson. Yep. Also, Blake Bell, of course, those are shoots. We've had some guys in the last few years that may not make the cut. What's your feeling on that? I think we probably got spoiled with Delaney Walker <laughs> as far as having uh, <laughs> two explosive tight ends that could um, run and catch the ball. But really, as someone who can compliment Vernon, I don't think he has to be fast. Just someone who can do what Jason Witten does would be perfect. Someone who just gets open, catches the first down, gets a little eight, ten yards. Just make, contribute, really. Someone to just take the pressure off of. Vernon, really. I think Blake Bell mm -hmm. would probably be that guy because he's big, you know, the red zone target. Play quarterback, so obviously he would know where, where he should know the weak areas of defenses. Mm -hmm. And... Maybe they got to work on his blocking. But I don't think, um, as far as who's going to make the team, it may be Vernon, Blake Bell, Buster Anderson. And, well, they just signed Carrier what, to a two-year extension, so it'll probably be him. Did they sign, did they sign Carrier to a two-year extension? Yeah, that was earlier this year. Okay. Like a, a little two-year contract. Because I wonder sometimes, if in those extensions they say provided you make the team, but well, if he makes the team, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying he's a sure they're gonna keep him just because they signed him. Yeah, but. yeah. All right. Here's the thing: there's, there's two. There's actually there's three positions out on the field right now that are really up for grabs. Now, they're gonna put those pads on. We've seen DeAndre White. He looked like a superstar in OTAs, the mini camp. It's time to get serious, Ike. Yep. Is DeAndre going to still be the golden boy? I think Jerome Simpson just get it because he's a veteran right now. Mm. 
he probably start the season off as a starter. But if White comes on like everybody said he's doing, and once I say with middle of the week, maybe an injury might happen to Simpson, kind of pushes him in there. And uh, I think pretty much think he'll take that spot. Somebody got to uh, replace Ancorn, and he kind of, from what I'm hearing, he's fitting the bill. So uh, that's pretty. Uh, that'd be a good thing, I think. Get some young talent, especially at wide receiver. Yeah, because because Smelter, they keep making jokes about Smelter potentially coming back this year. Smelter's not coming back this year. Smelter will be back next season. I don't know why the media keeps getting that confused. Like they get everything else confused. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. So it's it's Smith. Bolden and Jerome Simpson to start the season and start. if something goes wrong or if DeAndre just cuts up like crazy in the next couple of weeks yeah, a tough yeah I see. decision to make yeah. who is in that secondary that's the other camp battle is it actually there's, there's a line battle going on too but the other camp battle the, one of the biggest magnitude has got to be who's going to play in the secondary next to Tremaine since we have nobody proven, I have to go with Risa. <laughs> from what I'm hearing. <laughs> I need some tissue. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, explain that though, why? Well, Oh wait, 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 say, I'm sorry, you said Risa. I thought you said right. Oh no, 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 Oh, no, thank no, you. No, I'll put no, the tissue, no. let me put the tissue back. <laughs> no, yeah, we go with Risa. Let's amplify uh, on that. Now, why are, you go, why are you going with Risa? Big body guy. Speed guy. They say he's great at man coverage. So I think that's what we really need. Plus, that will help Tremaine out. They're saying, as far as if they can just get somebody like Reese's skills, they'll be able to move Terrain Brock around, you know, let him cover number one guy, let Reese worry about that. Um, overall, I think the third, I'm hoping Jim Ward gets that spot. Um, I think people took. Well, they only saw the Bears game nationally, so if you haven't really just paid attention to him, he didn't have that bad of a season. He can't improve, but that Bears game kind of really put a smudge on his uh, reputation. I know, it's embarrassing <laughs> to talk about, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, can't, I take that on coaching because what after the first two times, you got to think, okay, they're back in the red zone. Let's switch him up, <laughs> send him somewhere else and let Color or Cox or somebody get on Marshall. Okay, but, but, remember, but remember, he had an injury. His foot was broke. So maybe, maybe after that foot heals up and it's supposedly healed up now, maybe yeah. we'll see the other Jimmy Ward that everybody watched footage on coming out of school will show up this year in a 49er uniform. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Before you go, Ike, got to give me the Holland. I'm going to give you a 3, 2, 1, 3, Two, one, Niners! <laughs> Introducing my man, Trey, and I'm telling you right uh. now, Trey, I'm excited, man. Season's already started. Yeah. We are only a couple weeks away from our first scrimmage. Ah, oh, the fever is hitting me. I can already feel that high kickoff. I hear you. It's, and they had their first practice yesterday, and uh, man, I'm saying, oh, some of the things that happened, as I mentioned earlier, Marcus Martin got made fool of by Alden Smith. I mean, no, no. Oh. <laughs> it was the ball Bowman that put a spin move on him and had him standing there wondering where he went. <laughs> wow. And Alden wow. Smith was working our offensive line like they weren't there. We could get excited about Alden Smith and Navarro Bowman, but then again, you got to worry about the offensive line. How come that happened? Uh. There's only one Alden Smith and there's only one Navarro Bowman. Okay, so... <laughs> That's right. What are your feelings and anticipation coming into this season, Trey? Uh, Kaepernick. That's that's the bottom line, Kaepernick. Whatever type of season he has, that's what we're going to have. If he goes out there, has a breakthrough season, because he, he has more weapons this season than he did last season. Mm -hmm. You know, he has, you know, we just got Reggie Bush or whatever. Reggie Bush, I know he gets injured a lot, mm -hmm. but if he goes out there and plays at least halfway the way he played for the Saints, mm -hmm. He could give us about six or eight touchdowns. Vernon Davis, if he could play a couple years, if he could play like he did a few years ago, he could give us another six, seven, or eight touchdowns. Then you still got Carlos Hyde. You got Bowden and Troy Smith. They played together in Baltimore. It's all on Kaepernick. It's all on Kaepernick, man. It, it is a good point. And you know what I was about to mention to you? I was going to say, 
the reason the media will not give us any breaks is because they say we have we have question marks throughout our lineup. Players they don't yeah. know anything about, they call them a question mark, but they don't assume anything positive. They, ex they expect nothing but negativity for them to fail, fail, fail. You mentioned Colin Kaepernick. You yes. know about what he went through this past offseason. Do you expect well, that to be? Is, yeah, is that going to be fruitful? Because what I'm hearing, is that going to be a good thing? You know, he went out there, got Kurt Warner's hook. That's fine. He wanted to understand the quarterback position even more. Kurt Warner, I mean, Kurt Warner could change his game a little bit, but baby, but his game is, you know, him, him and Russell Wilson, their quarterback IQ is pretty much the same, except that, to be honest, Russell Wilson makes better decisions on the run and everything. But Colin Kaepernick, if he can sit there and learn something for Kurt Warner and sit there throwing the pocket and run with the ball, you know, Clay Matthews said it best. Once he gets to running, once he gets to passing, nothing you can do. And we all know what team Clay Matthews played for. That's the <laughs> Packers. And every time Crap and Nick has played the Packers, what's happened? He owns them. He owns them. So, and like I keep saying, it's on Kaepernick. We got a new coach. Never mind that. We got changes on defense. Never mind that. If Kaepernick goes out there and have a breakthrough season, then nobody knows what he's going to do. Cause they don't know if he's gonna run or if he's gonna give it to old i mean uh yeah antoine bowden is he gonna give it to smith is he gonna give it to bush is he gonna give it to david or is he gonna hand it off to Connors high so that's the bottom line man you left a name that's out you left one important name out you left out tory smith and listen here's the thing oh yeah yeah going back to colin kaepernick's first year when he was like dominant yes who did he have he had a speed receiver and in this case, since he did have more speed, because let's face it, when you think about if Colin Kaepernick had a guy to go downfield, like Randy Moss, Randy mm. was the key, and people aren't looking at that like they should. Colin now has a speed receiver in Torrey Smith. Yeah. It's yeah. back. Now if you stack the box, Smith is gone, you'll be dead. We got Jerome Simpson, another man with blazing speed. Stack the box, you're dead. Reggie Bush can shoot over the middle for any kind of screen, you're dead. I'm giving away too much. It's all question marks in that secondary. As far as the linebackers and on the line, the defensive line, we pretty much there in that secondary. I mean, but we got Bethea. You don't like Bethea? No, I love Bethea. Bethea. I love Bethea. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I mean so. Uh, but they and Reader, no problem. I, I'm wondering if, you know, maybe it's just because, as I said, Sharice Wright, is, he's a veteran. He needs to be able yeah. to start. You got to give him respect. We got we got other candidates. Sharice ain't going to make it. It was just worrying me yesterday that they started him with the first unit. Keith Reese was my number one candidate. Keith and, of Reese course, after that, good. Dante Johnson. Dante, oh, Dante Johnson. Johnson. Dante Johnson, you're not going to beat him down the field long. It's coming across the middle of the field and running and covering the slot receivers where he's going to have his struggles. Beyond that... Dante's got pure speed, and I want him on Jimmy Graham on every play. I want Jimmy and Eric and Dante to be all together all game long. I want them to be I like boyfriends. <laughs> I still can't believe Seattle got him. I still can't believe they got Jimmy Graham, man. That's that's crazy. Yeah, well, that's they, that's they, crazy. They paid a lot of money, and yeah, they, they did, will though. suffer for that because now they got a whole lot of the problems. That's for another show. But I'm telling you right now, yeah. <laughs> you know, 6'2", Dante... All right, Eric Reed, and also Jimmy. Last year, Jimmy got two touchdowns, two touchdowns on us for the first time. Normally, Jimmy does not do well with the 49ers. Everybody knows that. Jimmy's Jimmy Graham stats all come from the NFC South, the sorriest oh, conference in football. I'm yeah. talking. I'm not talking about just the pros. I'm talking yeah. about college, <laughs> high school. NFC South oh, just stop. sucks. <laughs> And Graham, his buddy, Navarro Bowman is back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them two is, yeah. When yeah. when Jimmy comes off the line, Navarro will be there to meet him, man, like he used to before. And Jimmy be, oh, man, come on, man. You, you. He hates cool. to be hit. He hates to be touched. And Navarro likes to touch people. <laughs> All right, Brother Trey, I'm going to count you down. Three, two, one, bro. Okay. Give me some feeling, some emotion, that nine to fire. Three, two, one. 49ers! <laughs> Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Ike. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Ike. Always a pleasure to meet you guys. About to head into hostile territory. 
Just a few days between now and off to Texas and kick some Texas booty. <laughs> no more concern about, oh man, the offense is beating up the defense. The defense is just using the offense. Now we can beat them up all we want to and you'll be able to see who is the real deal out there. Between now and then though, see you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Looking forward to talking to you. <laughs> And remember to subscribe so you know when I'm coming looking for you. Count me out. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have to be secret. Nada! <laughs> oh, this is your crazy mother. <laughs>